Now, let us come back to the statement of the Ries representation theorem. So, re recall that it said that if a, if you have a locally compact Hausdorff space and a positive linear functional on that uh, on the space of continuous compactly supported functions on X, then there exists a sigma algebra B lambda which contains all the Borel sets. So, the Borel sigma algebra lies inside B lambda and a unique radon measure mu lambda defined on B lambda such that the uh, linear functional lambda f is given by the integration uh, against the this measure mu lambda. And I did not give uh, this additional nice properties that uh, mu lambda satisfies. So, let me give it now. So, further mu lambda satisfies the following properties. So, the first property is that for u open in x mu lambda of u is the supremum of lambda f such that uh, f is less than u and the second property is that for k compact in x we have that mu lambda of k is the infimum of lambda f such that k is less than f. So, remember that this is again the notation that we used before. So, this means that uh, 0 less than f less than or equal to 1 and the support of f is inside u. This is what f less than u means and k less than f means that again 0 less than or equal to f less than 1 uh, support of f is compact and f is identically equal to 1 on k. So, in addition to being a radon measure, this mu lambda satisfies these two properties where uh, its values on open sets is given by a supremum of these lambda f's where f ranges uh, over functions which are uh, which have support compact support inside u and which are taking values only between 0 and 1 and similarly for k compact the value mu lambda k is given by the infimums of these values lambda f where f ranges uh, over all functions which have compact support and range between 0 and 1 and which are identically equal to 1 on k. So, let us look at the proof of the Ries representation theorem. Now, there are many proofs available and I have decided to follow the proof in Follens book. So, so, for the proof I will follow Folland's book. Uh, which I found the proof I found to be quite uh, nice. So, I will follow that. So, this is theorem 7.2 in Folland's book. Now, we begin by taking property 1 above as uh, a definition. So, this means that if u is open, then we define mu u to be the supremum of lambda f such that 
f is less than u. So, we take this as a definition uh, for the measure mu u for u open and now we define mu star of E. So, now E is an arbitrary subset of x and then we can define mu star of E as the infimum of mu u says that E is contained in u which is open. And uh, we claim several things. So, this proof will require several steps uh, which uh, shall prove various properties of mu and mu star. So, let us uh, list them one by one and try to prove them. So, we make the following claims. First one is that mu star is an outer measure. So, the mu star that we just defined is an outer measure. So, if mu star is an outer measure by uh, by Carrot theory measurable me uh, extension theorem, extension theorem we get C mu star x which is the sigma algebra of all carathetary measurable sets, carathetary measurable sets in X with respect to the outer measure mu star. Uh, now, the restriction of mu star, so we denote the restriction of mu star to c mu star x. This is a measure and this is denoted by mu. So, this is again due to the Carrot theory extension theorem. Now, we set our B lambda to be precisely this sigma algebra of Carrot theory measurable sets. Now, the second one is that uh, all open sets are in B lambda and this implies that the Borel sigma algebra sits inside B lambda because the Borel sigma algebra is the smallest sigma algebra containing all open sets and B lambda contains all open sets. So, the second claim is that all open sets are in are carathetically measurable. Thirdly, uh, we have so because all Borel sets are inside B lambda, we have that all compact sets are also uh, measurable, carathetically measurable, and we have that uh, mu satisfies property 2 which is that mu k. So, if k is compact this implies that mu k is the infimum of lambda f such that k is less than lambda. So, this was part of the additional property of uh, mu on compact sets and what we are claiming here is that once we define property 1, once we take property 1 as a definition then property 2 follows for compact sets. And lastly that the relation lambda f equals f d mu holds for all f in c c x. So, let us prove these claims one by one. So, proof of the first part. So, we have to show 
that mu star is an outer measure. So, if we show that for any arbitrary subset E, we have that mu star E is the infimum of these sums mu u j, j equal to 1 to infinity such that E is uh, covered by the union of uh, uj's, j equal to 1 to infinity and all uj's are open. So, if we show this, then this implies that mu star is an outer measure due to the lemma that we once uh, stated which was for uh, due to the following lemma let us let me write it down due to the lemma. So, this lemma said that uh, if E is a collection of subsets of x says that phi so the empty set and the entire set x both belong to E and a row is a map from E to 0 infinity then mu star of E so for E in x mu star E given by the infimum of a rho E j j equal to 1 to infinity says that E is a subset of the union of E j's j equal to 1 to infinity and E j belongs to this collection E. This is an outer measure. This is an outer measure and uh, this was proved uh, I think I left it as an exercise, but I said that the proof is exactly as you would prove that the Lebesgue outer measure is an outer measure. So, I left this proof as an exercise. So, here our rho is in fact this mu, this is our rho and our E is the collection of all open sets in E, so open sets in X. So, then uh, if, if we show that this equality holds, uh, then mu star will be automatically in an outer, outer measure. So, to show this, note that it suffices to show, to show that if mu if u is open u j infinity says that u j is open for all j. So, u itself is open u is open then mu u is less than or equal to this sum j equal to 1 to infinity mu u j. So, this will imply that uh, the infimum over these sums j equal to 1 to infinity mu u j says that E is covered by u j's u j open and this is equal to the infimum of mu u says that E is covered by a single open set u. So, we just have to show that if u is open and given by a countable union of open sets then it satisfies the uh, this is the countable sub additivity property sub additivity property. So, so let uh, 
So, note that by definition, so by definition, we have that mu u is the supremum of lambda f such that f is in u. So, uh, in turn, it suffices to show that for any f less than u, we have uh, lambda f is less than or equal to this sum mu u j, j equal to 1 to infinity. So, then we can take uh, the supremum on the left and we will get mu u. So, how do we show this? So, let let us fix uh, a function which has compact support in u and whose range is between 0 and 1 and let k be the support of f and this sits inside u. Now, u is this union of u j's and so this is an open cover of the compact set k and this implies that there exists a finite collection say u1, u2 up to un such that k is contained in the union in the finite union of this n open sets u1 to un. And now I am going to use the existence of partition of unity partition of unity phi i. So, there exists a partition of unity phi i subordinate to the cover u j i j equal to 1 to n. So, j equal to 1 to n here also uh, such that summation phi j is identically equal to 1 on k. So, this is j equal to 1 to n. So, now this implies that lambda f can be written as lambda f times j equal to 1 to n phi j because k was nothing but the support of f and so on the support of f uh, this sum is 1. So, f is equal to f times sum of phi j, j equal to 1 to n and by linearity this is j equal to 1 to n lambda f times phi j. Now, each f phi j is supported inside u <coughs> uh, j is less than u uh, j. So, this implies that lambda f phi j is less than or equal to mu of u j and so this Im implies that lambda f is which is equal to j equal to 1 to n lambda of f phi j is less than or equal to the sum j equal to 1 to n mu u j and this is less than or equal to j equal to 1 to n uh, 1 to infinity mu u j. So, this proves that um, this uh, mu star is an outer measure. Now, for the second claim, we have to show that if u is open, u belongs to the sigma algebra of carathedral measurable subsets, which is equivalently saying that mu star e equals mu star e intersection u plus mu star e minus u for any subset e in x. So, uh, it suffices first. So, we, we reduce the problem twice. So, first 
it suffices to show that mu star e is greater than or equal to mu star e intersection u plus mu star e minus q because the other inequality is obvious due to mu star being an outer measure. So, by countable subadditivity mu star e is less than or equal to the right hand side. So, we have to show that mu star e is greater than or equal to the right hand side. On the other hand, if mu star e is infinite, there is nothing to show. So, we can only uh, we can restrict uh, our case uh, our attention to the case if mu star e is finite then this holds. We can also make a second reduction which is that by outer regularity outer regularity it suffices to show this to show the inequality if E is open and still we have mu star E equals mu E if E is open this is finite. So, now we have to show when E is finite uh, when E is open of finite measure we have to show this inequality. Now, if E is open if E is open this implies that E intersection u is open and <laughs> this means by um, our very definition of mu star. So, mu star E intersection u is now mu of E intersection u because it is open and now this is equal to the supremum of lambda f such that f is less than E intersection u. So, now given epsilon greater than 0 choose f less than e intersection u such that lambda uh, f plus epsilon or rather lambda f is greater than or equal to mu e intersection u minus epsilon by 2. Similarly, now that we have chosen a function f of compact support with, with support inside the intersection u, we have e minus support f is open. So, choose g in less than e minus support f. Note that support f is compact, so it is closed. So, the um, complement is open. So, we, this is why e minus support of f is open. So, now we can again choose uh, g less than e minus support f such that lambda g is greater than or equal to mu of e minus support f minus epsilon by 2. But the way we have chosen f and g this implies that f plus g is less than e because uh, when g is 0 when f is non 0 g is 0 and vice versa. So, f, f plus g is still between 0 and 1 and its support is now between is now contained in E. So, this implies that mu E uh, is greater than or equal to lambda times lambda of f plus g which is equal to lambda f plus lambda g by linearity and now we have chosen f and g so that this is greater than or equal to mu e intersection u plus mu e minus support f 
minus epsilon by 2 and epsilon by 2 make an epsilon. But since apport of f is contained in uh, so in u, so this implies that this is greater than or equal to mu e intersection u plus mu e minus u minus epsilon. So, this is because support of f is contained inside e intersection u which is inside u. So, <coughs> uh, mu of e minus u is less than or equal to mu of e minus support of f. So, this shows that uh, all open sets are indeed in the uh, sigma algebra of Carathéodor immeasurable sets uh, B lambda. So, this proves our second uh, claim. Now, the third claim is that uh, mu satisfies property 2, namely that if k is compact compact then mu k note that k is a uh, carathetor immeasurable because it is a Borel set and uh, Borel sets lie in the sigma algebra of carathetor immeasurable sets. So, now we have to show that this is the infimum of lambda f says that k is less than f. Now, recall that by definition, we have that mu k is equal to the infimum of mu u such that k is contained in u and u is open. So, let me denote this right hand side here by lambda 1 and the right hand side here by lambda 2 and I am going to prove that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. So, first note that that if uh, u is open such that k is contained in u, then by Urizon's lemma, Urizon's lemma there exists uh, a function f which is continuous with compact support such that k is less than f is less than u and so this implies that this implies that lambda f is less than or equal to mu u because this uh, latter on the right hand side was the supremum by definition this is the supremum of all such so let me write here h says that h is less than u so this means that lambda 2 is less than or equal to lambda 1 so now we will prove the reverse inequality so let uh, f in C C X such that k is less than f. Now we have to find an open set uh, such that f is less than u epsilon. So how do we do this? So I set let epsilon greater than zero and take u epsilon to be the set of all points in X such that f x is greater than 1 minus epsilon. So, because f is continuous this set is open. Now, we immediately have that since f equals 1 on k, k is a subset of u epsilon and also if uh, g is less than u epsilon, 
uh, then we have that lambda g is less than or equal to 1 minus epsilon inverse times lambda f since uh, because f x is greater than 1 minus epsilon. So, this means that 1 minus epsilon inverse f minus g is greater than or equal to 0 because this is strictly greater than 1 and this is between 0 and 1. So, we have this inequality which shows that lambda g is less than or equal to 1 minus epsilon inverse times lambda f. And now, if we take the supremum on the left hand side, this means that mu of u epsilon is less than or equal to 1 minus epsilon inverse lambda f. And so, letting epsilon goes to 0, this means on the right hand side, on the right, well, first of all, this means that mu k is less than or equal to mu u epsilon, which is less than or equal to 1 minus epsilon inverse lambda f. And now, we can take uh, epsilon going to 0 on the right hand side. So, this implies that lambda k, a, uh, sorry, mu k is less than or equal to lambda f. So, this shows that lambda 1 is less than or equal to lambda 2 and so these two quantities are in fact equal. So, this, this equality holds. So, we have also proved the third assertion. Now, we will derive some consequences of this third assertion. Uh, 